This week we're focusing our attention a little closer to home and head off over the Black Spur towards Lake Eildon to explore some rivers and streams that helped forge both Gavin's and my own passion for fly fishing. So we've just arrived at uh, one of the small little rivers on our way to, on, to Eildon. You've got to take note of these. Sometimes you'll just drive over the top of them and forget about them. But with a small little rod, like a little two weight, like an air two weight like this, matched up with a, a light little reel, like a little galvan, they're exceptional rivers to spend some time with. You've got to look after them. You can't, well, you're not coming here to keep all the fish you catch, but um, we practice catch and release, which I think you need to on these small little streams. If you want to keep fish, once you get into the put and take fisheries or the lakes, certainly do that. But here, Practice catch and release so when you come back next time or your mate or your brother or your son comes back, there's fish there for them too. Well, I've just arrived down the river. We've walked down from the car. It's very important when you do walk downstream that you walk away from the river. So as trout always face upstream, you don't want them to get spooked before you even get to the water. So we walk, we cut through the paddock a little bit and then duck into the river and then you can start working your way upstream to target the fish and they haven't even seen us coming. So what we've got again we, with the short little rod, we've set up here, it's pretty early in the morning and there's been a little bit of rain so if it was very hot and windy there'd be um, grasshoppers on, on, the, on the wing and falling in the water. So they're a little bit sluggish this early in the morning so we've got uh, what we call, um, it's a stimulator. So it looks like a, a big insect or it could be a, a grasshopper or a moth. And trailing that, we've got about two or three feet of tippet down to a, uh, a little uh, bead head uh, nymph. So it's giving you, you, I suppose, two bob each way. So you're targeting fish if they're looking up to the surface or if they're feeding on the nymphs underneath. It's also quite important that you apply uh, like a fly source or a, or a floatant to your fly to keep that um, up on the surface all the time because eventually it will get waterlogged. So just a little bit there is quite important and we don't like to coat it. You don't want it to make it really claggy. You just want enough of those fibres to keep it floating and you're going to enjoy your fishing for the rest of the day. Your enjoyment of a day's fishing can be optimised by reading the water in front of you and targeting the best water and similarly not wasting valuable time on less productive sections. This is getting up to our prime little area, what we call the eye of the, uh, the run there. And just you can just see there's some quiet water just right up on the, on the left hand side next to where all the rapid water is coming down. So uh, trout, the same as any other fish, is quite lazy. So they'll sit in that slack water duck out to the fast water when something comes down their way and eat it. So uh, this is where we've got to be uh, pretty meticulous with our casting and work every little bit of it and hopefully we can pull out a fish from it. Just went under then, so that, what we've got like with the indicator there, um, the whole purpose of that, when it takes the nymph, it'll pull this indicator straight under. And uh, funny enough, fish eat for a living, so they can know the difference between a nymph like this or something which is real. So they'll taste it and go, that's not food, spit it straight back out. But quite often this nymph doesn't always travel there or straight under. This might be even in front of it. So the time it takes to grab it, and then spit it out, 
the time you indicate it comes down, it's already on the way out. So you don't always hook up. So uh, that was a, a take, so there's definitely a fish there. So we can give him another go, even with the same fly, because there's a little bit of movement there, a little bit of colour in the water. Otherwise, you'd normally change fly. Perhaps go to a smaller one, perhaps a different colour, and see if you can't tempt it to take it again. But because there's a bit of colour, we'll give this one another go and see if we can't hook him up. Well, I think we've, uh, we've fished that area as well as we can. We've done that grid system and cast all the way through it. We've had one take uh, and didn't hook up on it. But now, once you've done that, then you can move on to perhaps some different water uh, and do the same thing again. So it's a matter of repetition and persisting and it will pay off. Finally, it's persisting and uh, we're working our way up to the end of this pool and sure enough we've got a little one to come and take which is, uh, which is good because it's been relatively hard going. These, uh, these small rivers are sometimes better with a little bit of sun and things like that so uh, it's been pretty hard through, through in the morning sort of playing these fish and getting them to be nice and aggressive so uh, it's finally just to get off the mark and get one to, to, to grab hold. So uh, we'll get you a look at him. He's not going to be a big fish, but you're not coming to these rivers to, to catch monster big fish. You're coming to walk up, look at the scenery, cast, and if you can get something to grab the end of your line on that fly, then it's all worthwhile. A lovely little rainbow. Um, they're just beautiful. No matter what size they are, they're just beautiful. It's all good fun to catch these little little fish and a lovely little rainbow. So we'll get him back in the water and uh, he'll grow a lot bigger for next time you come up here.